Okay, so the first thing uh, we do, we uh, open the SMS um, program and uh, we locate the uh, Riverflow 2D template, which is the one that creates the whole uh, Riverflow 2D system within the SMS program. Uh, so we go ahead and open that. Uh, this area property is the uh, conceptual coverage where we are going to enter uh, the domain extent. We'll define that as a type model generic 2D mesh. And then uh, we import the elevation data set. It's this file here is an XYZ um, data. We use the import wizard. It's a space separated uh, file. And here's the uh, points that represent the elevation of the area that we are going to model. This is the main river. Uh, we can uh, plot this using contour schemes, and you can see the reds, which are the lower elevations, and the greenish, which are the highest elevation. So the flow will come from upstream to downstream in this direction. OK, so uh, we'll set the projection for that, which is useful for uh, later use for exporting to Google Earth uh, mapping and that type of uh, plotting. We use a state plane, coordinates for Washington North, which is the one that covers this area. Uh, and the information is in, in feet. Um, now, the next thing we do is to import, if you have one, uh, an aerial image. And this is useful for uh, representing your results over that image and also to enter further data if you want to have them uh, enter here. Uh, now, next step would be to um, create the polygon that represents the boundary of the model domain you want to enter. So I'll go ahead and enter an upstream uh, line here. This will be our entrance uh, point. Uh, we'll have another polyline representing this part here, downstream, and then we close the polygon here. So we have, let me turn off uh, the image here so you can see better. Now we have this uh, polygon that uh, creates the extent of the modeling area. Now I'm go going to uh, redistribute the vertices by selecting all the uh, arcs that I created, and I will redistribute the vertices to create elements that will be um, 50 feet in, in size. So this will drive the mesh generation engine to create elements that are more or less uniform. You can also refine them if you want in different methods. Um, now, uh, we need to enter the boundary conditions. So the boundary conditions here, uh, I enter by selecting the arc and clicking on attributes. And the boundary condition we'll use here as a discharge. And I will use here as 20,000 CFS upstream. And downstream, I'll use a uniform flow discharge, which is uh, enter here as uniform flow discharge. Uh, uniform flow outflow, I will enter as uh, energy slope. 0 0.025 here. And that completes the creation of the conceptual model. So we have our boundary conditions here, uh, or extent of the model. And we all uh, only need to uh, build the polygons, because we need to make sure this is a polygon. And which how uh, we need to link this polygon to the scatter set that represents the bed elevations. So we uh, click on the polygon and click on attributes. The bathymetry type will be scatter set taken from the bed elevation scatter set we enter. And that's essentially we need to all we need to complete uh, the model. So uh, now uh, we can go ahead and rename this. Let's rename it as uh, mesh one. And then we can, and this is optional, obviously, but uh, we can now use the feature objects map to 2D mesh to generate the mesh. Now, this is the mesh. We can uh, make sure that the mesh is capturing the elevations by 
uh, using the display options and drawing contours and we use color fill. So we see here that the actual colors on the elements represent the, the uh, bed elevations here in the main river. So we have the flow coming from upstream and downstream. Okay, so let's save this as uh, the name of the river, whole river. And let's uh, go ahead and run the model. I will just accept the, re the, the defaults here, but there are many things you can uh, use to, this is the data input program. I just uh, using the simulation time of two hours, output interval, uh, crew number, CFL condition one, uh, the initial conditions are dry bed, and this is our in English units. So let's uh, run the model. So when the model runs, it shows you uh, an image of, of the water depth or other uh, options that you have here. You may have here the volume conservation error, which is nearly uh, close to zero most of the time, uh, the time step, and a number of other information that you get in this uh, window. So when, when you close the model, uh, it writes other results. Um, and also, um, you can import the results back here for post-processing. Uh, so if you import the results of the round you just created, you can use this file here. And you can see, for example, the bed, the uh, depth. You can turn off uh, the elements if, if they become annoying uh, for your view, or uh, you have a number of uh, things you can make here. Uh, for example, removing the elements. Uh, you can turn off uh, the uh, scatter set. And also, uh, you can. Uh, view this in, in 3D if you want it. Uh, just for example, uh, let me leave these elevations here. If you use this option, uh, you can visualize the results and zoom in to look at the at, at your uh, results in, in the, uh, different uh, three-dimensional views. Um, uh, you have other options to plot uh, uh, fruit numbers, uh, you know, water surface elevation, velocities, uh, and, and other uh, of the results that you get with the model. And you can generate animations as well. I just wanted to give you a, a quick overview, as, as, as you can see, in, in, in just a few minutes, um, uh, you can have a full-flown um, uh, simulation uh, with RiverFlow2D and SMS.